So, um, look, let me move on to um, what I believe the Lord's asked me to share with you guys today. And this is uh, very specific to the United States of America. And after I give this prophetic word, we're going we're gonna to go into a little time of intercession for what's going on over there. So to give you a little bit of background, I've released a series of prophetic words on videos starting back in June about the United States of America. And you can check those out on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. And some of those words, some of those prophecies that I spoke out are actually playing out as we speak. And in particular, there was two that stand out to me. The first one is that um, there was going to be a series of shockwaves across the United States of America. We've seen that play out with Black Lives Matters, the tearing down of statues, uh, the burning of Bibles in Oregon. There's been all sorts of things going on. But the one in particular that stood out was I felt the Lord saying to keep your eye on the state of Wisconsin. And even as we speak, I believe they're about to start a recount of the votes in Wisconsin. And I, I believe that, um, that there could well be something uncovered there that could play out over the next uh, few days or perhaps even weeks in terms of the results of the U.S. election. So um, I wanted to share with you what I believe the Lord has been speaking to me over the last few days. And uh, bear in mind that as I give the dates that the Lord um, gave me these particular words, that Australia is a day ahead of the USA, so it can be a little bit confusing at times. But um, so let me go back to uh, last Monday morning, uh, the 2nd of November, which was the evening of Sunday the 1st in the US. This is what I received. This is what I saw. I saw a tattered American flag. It was quietly, quite badly torn and stained in places. And I heard the words, ragged glory. And I am well aware that the most famous American flag is the one that William Driver named Old Glory, that big flag that he had. And I see much prophetic significance in his story, which I won't go into now because I want to get to the thrust of what I believe God is saying about this. But for this vision that I had of the flag, I knew that God was saying that the glory of America was badly torn and stained. I felt the Lord saying that America was raised as a nation founded on the word of God and for generations was a nation that was a beacon of hope all around the globe while being strong in the defense of liberty. And then I heard the Lord say, a Donald Trump victory in the U.S. election is not the answer to the church's problems, nor is it the answer to the nation's problems. And this is back last Monday, okay? So I'm going to move forward through the week till we get till today. Um, I also felt the Lord say, a nation that walks in pride has walked away from the favor of God. James 4 verse 6 says, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Whenever we are in that position of pride, we are actually resisting. We, we are preventing God from doing what he wants to do, which is pour out his favor and his grace upon us. Then I heard the words, I mean, this sounds a little bit scary, but it'll get better. Then I heard the words blue wave, but immediately following that, I felt the Lord take me to that old Hans Christian Andersen story of the emperor's new clothes. And most of us are familiar with this story, but I'll just give it a brief recap. It's the story of an emperor who is defrauded into thinking that he is being sold brand new beautiful garments fit for a king, whereas the thread, the fabric and everything else that goes to make up those garments actually doesn't exist at all. And the catch was uh, that the people supposedly weaving the fabric for the clothes, selling these clothes to the, to, uh, to the emperor, tell those looking at what they are doing that um, if you are unfit for the office that you hold, you can't see these clothes at all. So the emperor had sent a series of government ministers to look at this fabric and check it out and come back with a report as to whether it's as good as these guys say it is and each one of these people uh, uh, come and have a look at the weaving of this fabric and of course there's nothing there but if they go back and say I couldn't see anything 
the king's going to say or the emperor's going to say, um, you are unfit for office and then, then they're going to get fired. So these fraudsters who are managing this process managed to convince everyone who works for the emperor that this fabric is real and that they mustn't let anyone know otherwise th that it's not real. Otherwise, they will be scorned as unfit and they will lose their jobs. And so everyone up to and including the emperor himself then pretends that they can see this beautiful fabric which actually doesn't exist. The emperor gets so carried away with the deception that he parades down the street naked with everyone convinced he is royally attired until a little child says, but he hasn't got anything on. America is like that emperor. Boastful in its economic strength, proud of its military capability. But neither of those things is what brought America to its position of preeminence among the world's leading nations. It was only the favor of God and the nation has progressively turned its back on God. None of this is news to any of you. But this is not about Donald Trump. It's about America as a nation pridefully walking down the street naked in her moral bankruptcy while being cheered on. But that little child in the story who was not afraid to expose the naked emperor is who the church must become. That's what I felt the Lord was saying in this vision that I had on Monday. But the church generally has compromised and compromised until it has nothing left but a faithful remnant. I believe that you guys joining me on this uh, Zoom call today are actually part of that faithful remnant. It's not just a faithful remnant in the United States of America. If you're joining us here from anywhere in, the, in Western civilization, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Compromise, 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 compromise until there's nothing left. And I believe that the Lord is saying that the key to the future of America lies in the faithful remnant. Now, at this point, I was thinking, Lord, are you saying there will be a blue wave and the Democrats will win the election? And that's the way I was kind of leaning in my spirit. But there was a check there. You know, when you, when you feel like you're hearing something from God, but there's confusion around it. God is not the author of confusion. And so I'm glad that I just waited and, and, and just put it before the Lord, put it before the Lord. Something in me would not let me release that as the summary of what God was saying. What I just shared with you, the tattered flag, the naked emperor, it all sounds, the blue wave, it all sounds very uh, foreboding in a way. So early the next morning, this is the Tuesday morning here, which would be Monday night, your time, I came back here to my studio and I got on my face before God and I asked him to make plain to me what he was saying. And I was saying, I was kind of saying, Lord, whatever you tell me to speak out, that's what I'm going to speak out. Whether it's, uh, it, it's my job prophetically to speak the word of the Lord without fear or favor. So I know that there are going to be people that see this video and they're going to like some of the, they're not going to like some of the things that I have to say. And who knows what the fallout from that would be. But I have a responsibility before the Lord to share what I believe he puts upon my heart. So this is what I felt the Lord say on the, the Tuesday morning. There is a blue wave threatening to engulf the United States of America. But for the sake of my remnant and for the sake of the gospel, I am releasing a red wave. That red wave is the blood of my son, Jesus. Then I felt the Lord say, Donald Trump will win a second term and during that second term will enact laws that will protect the clear clarion call of the gospel. I heard him say, multitudes are in the valley of decision. If the church, the ecclesia of God, will now rise into her true identity, salvation will be poured out across the nation. 
This is the red wave of salvation. It is pure and will, will be held up by the ecclesia of God as a holy standard to run to. The church will once more point to the cross of my son and salvation will pour out. The only path to awakening is through the cross. Embrace the cross and the nation will thrive once more. Then I felt the Lord say, there will be huge upheaval over the next four years, but those who commit completely to my call will thrive in unexpected ways and walk in peace even as the nation wallows in anxiety. There is anxiety all across the United States of America. The spirit of fear has been loosed over America and with it, trust has been destroyed in institutions that have stood for generations. I felt the Lord also say, the media in all its formats, so we're talking about online, we're talking about, um, we're talking about Twitter, Facebook, we're talking about traditional media, press, uh, polling uh, companies, all those things. The media in all its formats, formats is about to be exposed as the consort of the Jezebel spirit lying and attempting to seduce a nation away from God. Then I felt the Lord say, for my plans to unfold... The church must humble herself at my feet and receive directly from the throne room. I felt the Lord also say, and I believe that this speaks of some economic turmoil coming to the United States, that the spirit of mammon, which has enabled greed and covetousness as idols of the nation of the United States of America, that spirit of mammon is itself about to be bankrupted. And then I felt the Lord say, America, choose now whom you will serve. I believe the Lord is saying right in this moment that if you choose to serve the Lord and Him only, He will navigate you safely through the troubled waters that are about to come. Then on the morning of the 4th of November here in Australia, so that's the evening of the 3rd, so that's uh, just after the, like the polls were going on in, in the United States of America, the, the election, people were voting. As the results favorable to Joe Biden began to roll in, I was beginning to doubt what I'd felt the Lord say about Donald Trump serving, excuse me, serving a second term. But as I was watching all these different uh, election figures roll in, I felt that still small voice in my spirit say, John, don't you believe me? Then in the middle of the night of the 5th here in Australia, God woke me to pray. I've been awakened to pray every night over the last week. And, you know, there's, there's something very powerful that happens um, in the Spirit when we pray. But when we don't know what to pray, the Bible promises us that the Spirit Himself will move through us. And one of the most powerful tools we can employ in that process of intercession is the gift of tongues because then it's the Holy Spirit speaking out His destiny, His will through us. We are declaring and decreeing and prophesying the direct, pure, um, unadulterated will of God over whatever situation there might be. So as I've spent time prostrated before the Lord, instead of trying to formulate my own ideas of what God might be saying or what should happen next or those sorts of things, I've just prayed in tongues. I've got, I've got God, I know that you want to pray through me. I'm praying, believing that your Holy Spirit is speaking out as I pray. And so uh, I, I was there for um, the best part of an hour. I went back to bed and then I woke up at again. I woke up again at about 4 a.m. And as I was waking, I went into two very brief visions. And uh, so this was yesterday morning our time. I saw two white U.S. Postal Service vans. You know those those vans with the blue insignia on the side. I saw two white U.S. Postal Service vans pull into a driveway. I couldn't see the building. All I could see was the vans. Then that vision just uh, disappeared. And then I saw a second vision. And I think many of you will be familiar of this little film clip that, that is very popularly played 
across all formats of media. Whenever there is an anniversary celebrated at the end of the Second World War, there's a video of uh, somebody, I think it's of a man um, on, I believe it's Broadway in New York City, when uh, victory is declared at the end of the Second World War. And he's kind of dancing down the street and waving his hat around and he's celebrating this particular victory. And um, so I saw a vision that was very similar to that. There was this man with a very joyful expression on his face and he was skipping down the street and he was rejoicing and he was calling out, Donald Trump has won the US election. And then I woke up. Then last night, remember it's, uh, um, it's 10 o'clock in the morning here on Saturday the uh, 7th of November. So I know it's Friday evening there. So this would have been, um, I guess, about seven or eight uh, hours ago. Um, the same thing happened. I was up for a while. I was, I was just travailing before the Lord about what was going on in the U.S. And... Um, then I, I, I went, back to, went back to bed and as I was kind of drifting in, out of, in and out of sleep, I heard the word calumny. Um, calumny is spelled C-A-L-U-M-N-Y. It's a word that I don't think I've ever used in my vocabulary. I had a rough idea of what it meant. So I went to have, to have a look and to see what it means. Uh, calumny is the process of defamation, accusation, misrepresentations, lies, and twisting of the truth. And I felt that the Lord is saying that Donald Trump has been defamed. Accusations have been made against him, which are simply not true. Misrepresentations have been made about everything to do with his life. Some of the things that he has has spoken in media conferences, I've seen this myself, have been edited and cut and put back together to say the opposite of what he actually said in those different press conferences. And the media has consistently lied about him. Um, I'm also aware that God is able to use anybody and anything to bring about his purposes. And the degree to which um, God can use a man like Donald Trump is not necessarily determined by the strength of his character or his moral positions on different things. When God says, I'm going to move these chess pieces around the board because I want my kingdom expanded, he will use even those who are most wicked to bring about his purposes. I'm not saying Donald Trump is wicked. I'm just saying that um, he can use anybody and anything. And I'm very aware that the outcome of all of these things and everything that's going on in the United States of America, the outcomes of all these things are determined in the spirit realm and the church of God, the ecclesia of God, has a major role to play in how that outcome plays out. And so um, yesterday afternoon as I was... um, as I was praying and calling out to the Lord, I asked him where he wanted me to go with what I've just spoken prophetically, um, where he wanted me to go scripturally today. And uh, I was immediately taken to the book of James in the New Testament, chapter 5, verses 17 to 18, which says, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. And uh, for those, I think most of us would be familiar with the story of Elijah, but Elijah was a prophet raised up by God to directly confront the ruling spirit of Jezebel over the nation of Israel. And um, he was coming against a regime that was seeking to erase God from the nation. He was uh, coming against a ruling spirit that had introduced all kinds of sexual sin to that nation. He was coming against a ruling spirit that worshipped prosperity uh, for a small percentage of people and cut the rest of them out of the equation. He was coming up against a ruling spirit who rejoiced in the killing of babies. 
and there is an aspect of what is going on in the United States of America where God is saying that the blood of 60 million babies murdered since Roe versus Wade is calling out from the ground for justice and God is unleashing justice upon the United States of America and the remnant bride must now rise up to bring the nation to repentance or um, the, the justice that is released is going to look a lot like the judgment of the Lord. And so... Um, you know, even this morning when I flicked over, flicked over to my news on my phone, it looked so much like Joe Biden and the Democrats were closing in on a um, on a victory in the United States of America. But I believe that the Lord is saying that the story is not is not done yet. I also recognize that um, there are many, many, many very seasoned, very mature prophets right across the world that have prophesied a Donald Trump victory in this election. And um, if, if it turns out that that doesn't happen, if it turns out that Joe Biden becomes uh, the next president of the United States of America, I would be the first one to get up in front of you all and repent for my part in not pursuing the Lord to hear more clearly. But I believe, I still believe that this matter is not yet settled and it's being played out in the courts of heaven even as we speak. I believe that the blood of Jesus, I believe that the authority of God in this question is still to be played out. There is still a part to be played. I believe that Wisconsin is still going to have um, a major effect on the outcome of this election. I believe that somehow God is going to turn this thing around. And, you know, if it just played out as it, as it looked like it was going to at the start of, as the votes started coming in, it looked like Donald Trump was going to win and re win quite comfortably, then you wouldn't be able to attribute the victory to God. Recently in Australia, we had an election where um, it, was, it was said that the Conservative uh, Party of Australia um, could not possibly win the election, but it all got turned on its head and we now have a Christian Prime Minister. I believe that God has a, a unique purpose and destiny for the United States of America. I believe he's not done yet. I believe that this is just the start of the awakening of the church. There has never been more prayer and intercession over the United States of America than there has been over the last six months. And so what I would like to do now is I believe we should all pray. Now, whether you're here in Australia or you're there in the United States of America or you're elsewhere in the world, I want to tell you that the destiny of America affects you wherever you are on the planet. And so I'm going to ask Lucas to unmute all your microphones or get you guys to unmute all your microphones. And I'm just going to lead us in some prayer. And I just want you to raise your, your voices up, whether it's in tongues, whether it's in your native language, whatever it might be. Let's just pray for, for God's outcome to be released in this situation.